Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is your girl Adriana DC. So today I'm going to be giving you guys a quick little eyeshadow tutorial. Basically, I've gotten a few requests from my subscribers asking me to do a eyeshadow video, you know, going through the basics when it comes to your eyeshadow application. And I figured, you know, what better time than to do it right now during lockdown, you know, while everybody's at home. And of course, just so you guys can, you know, learn how to apply your eyeshadow in the simplest way possible now before we go on to the video i'm going to ask you guys to please click that subscribe button if you guys have not as yet please do give me a thumbs up if you're loving my videos and the rest of my video content please do feel free to drop a comment in the comment section and of course don't forget to click that notification bell so that way you'll be notified as soon as i upload my videos so yeah let's just go on to the eyeshadow tutorial so the first thing we're going to be diving into is the eyeshadow base. Now, when it comes to doing eyeshadow, one of the very most important things or uh, parts of the application is your base. Now, when I start out doing eyeshadow, I use my um, concealer. Now, you can very much use your concealer. And this is my MAC concealer in the shade NC45. But of course, there are eyeshadow bases out there for you guys. But if you're starting off and you do have a concealer in your con collection, by all means, grab your, con your concealer. It can be the exact same shape, shade of your foundation or it can be lighter. The lighter it is, obviously, it helps with the pigment of the eyeshadow. In addition to the pigment of the eyeshadow, your eyeshadow base helps the eyeshadow to last a lot longer. Obviously, if you're doing your makeup to go out or something like that, to hold up against the natural oils that your eyelids secrete, you want to apply a base so that way it will help the shades stand out and last a lot longer. So before I apply my concealer, what I'm going to do is just use my fingers and gently wipe over my eyelids. And obviously this is just to mattify some of the oils. Again, like I said, that's secreted on your eyelids. Have you noticed the eyelids are always really shiny? And then I'm going to go in with my concealer brush. Obviously, you can apply your concealer with your finger, with your fingers, <laughs> or you can apply it with a brush. But what you're doing is applying a very sparing amount, not to completely saturate your eye, but to apply a nice thin layer of product to your eyelid. Now, of course, when you apply your concealer, you want to apply the shade and blend it as far as possible up to your eyebrow lining and blend outwards. Now, the idea is to share this product out so it looks very matte and smooth as possible because we are creating a base for the eyeshadow. So the next important thing when it comes to doing your eyeshadow is your color scheme. Now, when it comes to applying your eyeshadows, what you usually start off with is a transition shade, a crease shade, then you move on to a depth shade, and then a eyelid shade. This is the most basic application or sections when it comes to applying your eyeshadow. So what you wanna do is whatever eyeshadow palette that you're gonna be using, you want to highlight them or kind of map it out or have a plan of the shades that you're going to be working. I'm going to just apply a picture of the color wheel when it comes to mixing and blending. Certain shades can give off a muddy look or should I say they can go somewhat brown and you don't want that. So the aim is to apply shades that have a similar undertone. Like, for example, now I'm using this eyeshadow palette and I'm hoping I'm not blinding you guys. Now, the reason why I choose to use this eyeshadow palette because this is the eyeshadow palette that began my whole obsession when it comes to doing eyeshadow. I bought this eyeshadow palette when I didn't even know how to apply eyeshadows. I bought it and then started practicing with it. Reason being, this particular eyeshadow palette gave me a lot of inspiration and I do like that the color scheme leans all within the similar to with similar tones. As you can see, the overall theme for this eyeshadow palette is blues. So yeah, this is eyeshadow palette that started my whole eyeshadow or makeup journey. 
So I figured why not do a how-to eyebrow tutorial using the eyeshadow palette that inspired me to, to start doing makeup. Now, if you notice with this particular palette, there are a few groups of shades. You have your true blues, royal blues, and you have your teal blue shades. So, for example, if you notice, your true blue shades in this eyeshadow palette would be this one, this one, this one, and this one. So, these would be your true blue shades in this eyeshadow palette. Now, when it comes to the royal blue shades, if you notice, you have this one, and this one is also royal blue, and this one also means more of an undertone royal blue shade. Then you have your teal blue shades. So you have this one, this one, this one, and this shade, and even this shade that's really dark has a blue-green undertone. Therefore, those shades in particular will work very well together. And if you notice, they are a couple shades lighter or darker than the other. So that's something that you want to aim for when you are mapping out or creating a color scheme for the eyeshadow look that you want to create. Now, these lighter shades, again, they just serve as a base or as a highlighter shade or they give you a nice wash of color in the transition area. That is if you're planning to work with the pastel shades, or if you wanna just create a very light, airy, very pastel-y blue shade or eye look, these lighter shades, that is what they're used for. In addition to that, some of these shimmery shades or shimmery shades on a whole tend to create a bit of texture on your eyelids. So whenever that's the case, you're going to walk with those type of shimmery shades. You want to apply a base shade over your concealer or your eyeshadow primer to kind of like um, lay the foundation and to further hide any textures that your eyelids have. So that way, when you apply the shimmery shades, you won't get as much texture as you would if you didn't apply the second layer of base transition shades your transition shades should be very light the next important thing when it comes to applying your eyeshadow are your tools now when i was in cosmetology school my she wasn't teaching me makeup she was teaching me nails she said to me you're only as good as the tools that you use and that may or may not have some right to it but if you don't have the right tools you can't get the job done properly so when it comes to applying your transition shade you need a fluff brush now if you notice this brush has quite a lot of fluff to it so therefore this is where you create or this is how it helps you create a smoky type of finish because obviously um you will not be able to pick up a concentration of color with this particular brush because it is so fluffy and phases out at the end so it's going to give you a very smoked out look when you apply your first shade. So the first shade that I'm going to be going in with, I'm actually going to be working with the teal shades. I mean, obviously, I'm all teal and, you know, pastel -y today. So therefore, um, at glance, the shades that I've mapped out that I'm going to be working with is again going to be the blue tone shades that all have a teal undertone. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going in with my lightest shade, which is my transition shade. Then as a crease shade, I'm going to be going into this green shade right here or this blue green shade. Now as a depth shade, I'm going to be using this shade right here because this has like a, a blue green and gray undertone to it. I don't know if that makes much sense to you, but that's what I'm picking up. So, I'm, and then I'm going to be using this shade here as a lid shade to complete my look. So first thing I'm going to be doing is diving into this shade. Now you want to tap your brush because these brush powders, these your eyeshadows tend to be very powdery and it can get everywhere and it can go on a bit blotchy if you do not tap your brush. So again, before I go in, sometimes, you know, when you apply your base or your primer, your eyeshadow base or primer, you can get creasing after you've laid down your base what you want to do is make sure smooth back out those creases because the product will sit your eyeshadows will directly sit in 
the creases of your eyelid. Okay, so what I'm doing is going in in a back and forth motion with this brush. Now, all you're doing is applying a transition shade, so you don't need to be super, super neat with it. What you want to do though is apply a very consistent layer of color throughout. So I'm tapping the shade in and then I'm going in in a back and forth motion. You want to do this very light. And to further disperse the shade or to buff the shade in, you go in circular motions. Now, when, you, when you're applying your eyeshadow, you want to kind of keep your color above the lower line of your eyelid. Now, if you're going for that, if you're, you know, wrapping the shade around to the lower lash line, then by all means, go for it. But ideally, if you're starting off, you want to use your lower lash line as a border for how far down you should take your brush when you're applying your shade. So if you notice, even though I'm going in circular motions, I'm going back this way. You want to take the shade this way, right? So that way you're kind of containing where you blend this shade. And you want to go up towards the eyebrow and kind of con control the application of the shade right in that area. Okay, so next we're going to be going into the crease shade and ideally you want to use a crease brush. Now, what does a crease brush look like? So unlike the first brush that was a round brush, a round and fluffy, your crease brush, it is fluffy, but it is somewhat narrow or flat. If you notice it, it's flat this way and kind of elongated. So that way your shade, you can sit into the sockets of your crease when you're applying your crease shade so again i'm going to be diving into this shade right here as my crease shade so now your crease shade should be a couple shades darker than your transition shade obviously because you want it to show up and you are you are beginning to add character to your eyeshadow look so you are increasing the depth of the colors and this is the point where you begin to deepen the shades of the colors that you're going to be using. So again, you want to dip your brush in. Again, you want to tap, place your brush in the socket, or in the crease area. You can start from the outer end and you can tap the product. Tap, tap, tap. And what you want to do is with the elongated or with the elongated shape of this brush, take the color through the crease line in your eyelid. And again, what you're doing is moving in a back and forth motion and you wanna do it ever so lightly. Now, don't be afraid of applying your shades. The only how you'll know how it's gonna come out is if you apply enough of it that you can actually see it so you can see whether or not the shade is blotchy or whether or not you know um the color is showing up or if you're getting the depth that you want so don't be afraid to apply your colors and as you begin to practice doing eyeshadows you will notice that the lighter light feathery motions is what gets the job done so that's, you know, that intensity will, it will, you will understand it as you go along and as you begin to practice. So again, I'm going in again one more time with the brush. I'm tapping at the outer corner. Yeah, I'm tapping the color in and again, taking it through the crease in a back and forth motion. And obviously where I've tapped and applied the shade, if I feel there's a harsh line or a harsh distribution of product in that area, I'm going to go in a circular motion. So this circular motion just helps to buff out the color and kind of like um, smoke it out. 
next we're going to be going in with our depth shade now when you're going when it comes to applying your depth shade you want somewhat of a bullet brush and this is what that brush looks like so as you can see it has a round circular point and it is very sharp short sorry short thick and rounded so this is purely for depositing colors because when it comes to your depth shade you just want to apply um, a couple dots of it and basically walk the shade in so you want to see that intensity or should i say concentrate that intensity and pretty much keep it nice and tight in that particular area because your depth shade like the name implies is usually really dark so you're not going to be blending it all out and i'll start with this because this is just going to deposit a lot more product than you want and just um it won't be so complimentary so again i'm going to be going in with this deep blue green shade right here i'm gonna dip in my brush into it and again tapping it and let me just highlight now when it comes to doing your eyeshadow as you guys will learn to recognize as you practice when eyeshadow basically accentuates the natural structure of your eyes so when i say to apply um your depth shade you are going to apply your depth shade in the outer corner in the indentation of your eye sockets or eyelids if that makes much sense to you guys so if you notice right here there is a dip well obviously everybody's eye structure is a little bit different but there is a dip <laughs> and that sounds funny right here right under your brow bone in that corner and that's where you want to apply your depth shade if you notice this is going in like a bullet or in a dot and again you want to keep it high above the lower line you do not want to take your depth shade down below the lower line because then you're going to have to walk to kind of um phase that shade out and kind of fluff it or should i say buff it out so you want to keep that shade concentrated right here in that little dent and you can take it in a little bit to the eyelids around the third of your eyelid and this is something that you want to do in in a in steps you want to build up your depth shade so we've applied our depth shade now what we're going to do is go back in with either your crease brush or your initial blending brush i would recommend that you use your crease brush reason being because you might need to go back in afterwards to reapply certain shades with your initial brush so keep it nice and light are you going to use the light shades and with the crease shade you want to tap 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 and again tap and circular motions but circular motions really tight okay you want to keep it really tight right here okay keeping it really tight right here in the outer corner and of course you can gently brush it into the crease because you don't want a concentration of a deep shade right there so you can actually see you know where the shade starts and ends you don't want that you want the intensity but you want to be able to see you want it to blend seamlessly with the look hence why you use circular motions and at this point you might need to wing the color out and again you don't do that with a heavy hand a very light hand because you're walking at the end of your eye crease by the outer corner sometimes you might want to just brush the color out and that's what we call winging it out a little bit but we're not really going to be focusing on that we're just focusing on applying this depth shade. So again, I'm going to go back in again and build up that depth shade. And again, I'm concentrating right in this indentation on the outer corners of your eye. And again, I'm going to go back in with that crease brush and circular motions.
And again, I'm just taking it in through the crease so that way it doesn't look like an abrupt intensity of color at the end. So now that we've applied our depth shades, we want to go on to our eyelid shades. But before we do that is at this point, we want to look back over our eyeshadow look and see if while we've added our crease shade and our depth shade, if we've lost our gradual transition into the transition shade. So basically what I'm saying is, if at this point you feel like you're seeing too much of the depth shade and it is not gradually going into the transition shade, by all means, you can go back in with your transition shade and you might just do that just to lightly phase out the edges. And again, this just helps the look to look like clouds of smoke coming out at the edges. By all means, when you do that, you can tend to lose a bit of the shades, as in the um, the variation in the shades that you've used. So again, by all means, go back in with your other shade as well. So you can go back in with your crease shade as well, which is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to do that very sparingly because we don't want to lose, you know, that um depth that we've created or the foundation that we've laid down now i don't really need to at this point with this eyeshadow look but i'm just doing it just to show you guys but again if you're going to go back in with the crease shade you want to do so very lightly because then you'll have to walk your gradient of shades all back through if you apply too much depth shade okay, now we're going to be going on to the lid shade now, the best product to apply your lid shade with is a flat brush. Now, this may very well be a concealer brush because your concealer brush is a flat brush. Now, once you get comfortable applying these things, when it comes to applying um, lid shades, you can very well go in with your fingers. But for this tutorial, we're going to use this flat brush. And again, I'm going to be going in to that enchanted shade, this entitled shade, which is a teal shimmery shade. Again, and I'm going to tap and apply it to the center and pull. Now, you want to sort of use your judgment when it comes to applying these shades. Because, again, you still want that transition even with your lid shade. So, you don't want to just pile this lid shade all over your lid. You want to apply it from the corner of your eye. Keeping in shape keeping in mind the shape of your eye and going towards your depth shade. So you want this to look as gradual as the rest of your blend as well. So by all means, you want to lay the product down where you want it and intensify it. Again, do not be afraid of your color. Apply it, but control how you apply it and where you apply it. So I'm just applying some tapping movement over that area. And I'm only taking this flat brush up to my natural crease. You don't need to because again, I'm going to be going back in afterwards with a fluff brush and kind of like blending the line out. But you want to sparingly apply this color and you want to be very careful with how hard you take your lid shade. So I would say aim for just below the natural crease in your eye. So now that you've laid the shade down, you can get a smaller fluff brush. Yeah, you can use a smaller fluff brush, which I would advise if you're starting off as well as you can use your initial brush, but you would have to do so very sparingly. And what you're gonna do is go into the crease area and lightly go back and forth. And what this does is just not make it look like you have a, a line in your eyeshadow application and it just makes things look very smooth and 
seam again let me just show you guys how the small brush a smaller fluff brush looks obviously it is very very light but this just gives you a lot more control so that way if you're not sure of where you're applying your brush you still play it quite safe so the next thing you want to apply now is a inner corner shade so now that shade just gives the look a kind of a pop to the entire look so you're going to be grabbing a small brush and we call it the inner corner brush and what we're going to be doing is applying a highlighter shade to the inner corner of our eye and to the highs of our brow to kind of give a a contrast and highlighted look to your eyeshadow now you want to aim for something white or shimmery or light pink or you can use your highlighter that you're applying on your cheeks because that's usually what we use in this eyeshadow palette i'm going to be using this white shimmery shade right here so i'm going to be going in with this white shade now ideally most highlighter shades do require you to use fix plus now when it comes to doing eyeshadow you guys you're going to want to invest in the well-renowned Fix Plus from MAC. Okay? I mean, I'm, th I'm talking about when you want to dive into shimmers to kind of not just walk with your matte colors. This is going to be your best friend. This little bottle of liquid here that you guys probably, you probably don't understand why they use Fix Plus. I probably don't either. But you want to get one of these. Okay? So, I've applied my little brush. I've applied the color onto my brush. And I'm going to apply some fix plus and this just helps to intensify the shimmers and it does make a difference but right here is where you're placing it and you want to dab it because if you don't you can end up spreading this shimmery color and it's going to look kind of um like kind of abrupt so you don't want to do that next you want to take the remainder of product and apply it to the highest point of your eyebrows and you want to do it if you're not comfortable with this step, go in very sparingly, okay? Because remember, you're walking with a white shade or a shimmery shade or a highlighter shade that can really highlight you. <laughs> and that's what you're basically doing, you know? When it comes to doing your eyebrows, your, I mean, your eyeshadow, your eyebrows play a very key role in your eyeshadow look okay so now that we've finished the top part of our eyes we want to go on to the lower lash line now when it comes to applying um obviously you don't need a eyeliner but eyeliners pretty much how should i describe it an eyeliner completes the look it ties in the entire eyeshadow look reason being your out, your eyeliner outlines the shape of your eyes usually you would have a darker eyeliner or when you guys get a bit more daring if you use a different shade then that also complements the rest of the look or completes the look but your eyeliner most likely ties in your entire eyeshadow look so a eyeliner that actually works will be your very best friend okay so the eyeliner that i'm going to be using is a eyeliner from avon which is called khaki and this is the color of it. And this is pretty much a deep green or army green shade. And then I'm going to be using some other colors to kind of like um, phase out the ends of my eyeshadow look. So I'm going to be just going in with my eyeliner to the lower lash line. And I'm going to be applying this to my waterline. So what is the waterline? You have your lower lash line, which is right under the rim of your eyelid. And then the waterline is this line on the inside that's a little bit harder to reach all right so i have outlined my lower lash line and as you can see automatically it kind of outlines my natural eye shape and kind of gives it a bit of a pop so pretty much your eyeliner is like your finishing look all right so that's the step that kind of completes or ties in the entire eyeshadow look now if you guys want that's all you need to do finish off with your eyeliner now if you're going to be using eyeshadow obviously 
what you're going to be doing is going in with a smudge brush so now when you're going to be walking on your lower lash line you want to use a smudge brush now i have a thin smudge brush from la girl cosmetics and this is just an elongated version of your inner corner brush so if you guys notice so the inner corner brush looks a little bit more narrow thinner and neater this one the bristles are a little bit longer and it's more or less the same width so this just helps you to get in under your lash line and phase the color out so what i'm doing is just literally phasing out the color because again when it comes to applying a shadow it's all about blending it's all about the finish and you want to achieve a smoky like or cloud like finish when it comes to applying your eyeshadow so that's pretty much what i'm doing and there's also another fluff brush which is a little bit more fluffy and this just helps to smoke it out a lot more or it also smudges it but it gives you a lot more smokiness just to finish off this look i'm going to be going in with the same teal shade that i use as a transition color and i'm going to be dipping into that shade Ooh, okay now i've actually taken up a bit too much and what you want to do is go in ever so sparingly because all you're going to all you're doing with this shade is is basically creating a light haze of color around the solid color that you have applied to your eyelids and there you have it your eye look is pretty much complete that is with some mascara and ultimately your mascara is usually your last step and if you can tell already it's added a lift to the eye look and you can finish off with your mascara but of course some people use falsies by all means if you can apply them go for it but a bit of mascara and a mascara that really works for you is all you need to put on your finishing touch so i'm gonna quickly go off camera finish my makeup and come back and find finish off this video so